I'm Dr. Rahi Victory, a reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist. And tonight, we are gonna do something totally different than we normally do. We're actually gonna review obstetrics from HBO's House of the Dragon. Hugely popular show, and I figured let's do something wildly different than we normally do just for fun, because there were some pretty cool obstetrical cases in here, and I thought I'd actually bring some science to all the stuff that they showed. For those of you that are squeamish, uh, probably not the right show for you, and scenes from what we're gonna show you are definitely not for the faint of heart either. Uh, and in the third delivery in the Game of Thrones series, House of the Dragon, uh, it is kind of emotional. So for those of you who've ever suffered loss, um, probably not a great uh, episode for you guys to watch. So spoiler alert for those of you who are watching this, if you are sensitive about anything related to blood, uh, you know, any kind of uh, loss or, um, you know, maternal or fetal harm, um, this is probably not the right thing for you to watch. So full disclosure there for everybody that's watching. Um, for everybody else, we'll try and put some scientific spin on the stuff that they put in there. Uh, and uh, keep it um, uh, as straightforward as possible for you. Okay, so we're gonna start with watching the show. In the very first episode from the very first season of the show, the a wife of the king is a, pregnant at the beginning of the show, and she goes into labor about uh, a third or a fourth of the way into the show. And uh, so we're gonna start off with her um, right after the king has been summoned to come to her side. So I'm just going to hit play and we're going to watch a little bit together. And I'll kind of pause and we'll talk about what we see. What's happening? The infant is in breach, Your Grace. All attempts to turn the babe have failed. Do something! So let's just stop right there and chat about that. So. This poor woman is already in labor and they have recognized that the baby is in breach. What that means is that the head is not presenting. It's either feet or bum or something else. It's usually bum. So when it's a, a breach presentation, um, he says that all attempts to turn the baby have failed, but no one ever tries to turn babies, which is called an external cephalic version in labor because the uterus is contracting and so you get a lot less space. So it's virtually impossible to do when a patient is in labor. In fact, when you wanna do an external cephalic version, you need an epidural. Sometimes we give the patients nitrous to relax the uterus. You want it as big and floppy as possible so that when you put your hands externally on the maternal abdomen, you need to push the baby's butt out of the pelvis and then push the baby's head and rotate it around and it'll flip around. It takes a lot of skill, you need ultrasound, you need anesthesia present, you need to be ready to do an emergency cesarean section because a lot of babies don't like it when they do that. And there is a risk of placental abruption. So the fact that he's saying that they tried to turn the baby makes absolutely no sense at all because no one would ever try and turn a baby in labor. Obviously this is somewhat medieval, so maybe they didn't know that. Uh, and there's certainly no epidural or nitrous in House of the Dragon, but clearly not gonna be an easy task, especially with the woman screaming, everything's gonna be tense, everything's gonna be rock hard. There is no way you would ever successfully spin that baby. So let's keep watching. Do nothing for her. We've given her as much milk of the puppy as we can. So milk of the poppy is obviously the same thing as opium. Um, this is also what heroin is derived from. So this is a very powerful narcotic. So what he's saying is we have given her milk of the poppy in order to reduce her pain. Obviously she's in a lot of pain because she's still screaming. Breach deliveries are quite intense and they tend to be fairly fast actually. So you go to full dilatation quickly, but then they don't always deliver. And he subsequently says, without risking the child, which means somehow they actually knew that if you give too much milk of the poppy, the child will come out suppressed. Just like these days, if we give a mom narcotics instead of an epidural to quell the pain, if the baby comes out shortly after you've given the narcotics, we actually have to give the babies Narcan because the babies won't breathe. They've got narcotics in them too. And a baby with narcotics doesn't breathe just like any adult that's overdosed also doesn't breathe and they go into respiratory arrest. That's the whole reason to give Narcan. 
is to bring back the respiratory drive, drop down the level of the narcotics, and let the patient breathe again. So in this case, despite the fact that they don't have much technology, they somehow knew that if you overdose mom with milk of the poppy, you actually are going to have a baby that has some risks. Without risking the child. Your queen is a strong woman. She's fighting with all her might, but it may not be enough. Emma! Emma! I'm here. I'm here. I gotta ask, where the hell has he been the whole time she's been in labor? But we'll let that one slide. It's a show. Yes, you will. Okay, so now all of a sudden she's basically asleep and quiet. I'm not quite sure how they got to that stage because just moments ago she was screaming in severe discomfort, but now she's like almost asleep. It's kind of an odd thing and they're, they're using a damp cloth on her head, which often helps. So the Meister, who's like their doctor, calls him over. You can see a little bit of blood staining on her dress there. Not unusual, there's always gonna be some bleeding. During a difficult birth, it sometimes becomes necessary for the father to make an impossible choice. Well, speak it. To sacrifice one or to lose them both. Okay, so here he's saying it's now the father's choice, the king's choice, to determine if he should sacrifice his queen, Emma, to save the baby or if he should risk losing them both, because if she stays in labor and the baby dies inside her, obviously the infection risk and something called the thromboplastin reaction, not to mention DIC and a whole host of other complications would almost inevitably lead to her death and horrible pelvic trauma, even if she did survive. So he's asking the king to make the choice. Okay, so we're gonna, hopefully skip over the fact that he should really be asking the queen. It shouldn't be the king's choice. She should be deciding what she wants, whether she wants to sacrifice herself for her child or sacrifice the child and risk her own health. But in this case, I guess because it's medieval, they're asking the king, also probably because he's the king. There is a chance that we can save the child. A technique is taught at the Citadel which involves cutting directly into the womb to free the infant. But the resulting blood loss of the house bells. So he's basically suggesting a cesarean section cutting into the womb. And he then says the blood loss is significant because obviously they probably didn't know what to do to manage blood loss. Here we use stitches and we use cautery and we use oxytocin to get the uterus to contract plus a whole host of other agents that we have if the uterus won't contract to get it to tighten up, squeeze down the tiny little blood vessels that are causing all the bleeding. And then once you can control the bleeding, the patients all do fine. And we generally speaking, never have any problems, but obviously they didn't have that at their disposal. So he's worried that once he makes the cut, they won't be able to control the bleeding. You can save the child. We must either act now or leave it with the gods. Okay, I gotta say, I do totally feel bad for the king here. He is being tortured and this epically sucks. Not quite a tearjerker for me, but almost. Kind of odd because the queen was sleeping here and he has to actually wake her up. So I'm not sure how they skipped over the fact that she was screaming so much before. They're going to bring the baby back now. Mm. And instead of telling her what's happening, he just says they're bringing out the baby. So all the little nursing people are gonna help pin her down now. Because obviously she's not gonna be comfortable during this procedure. 
You would think if they were doing this, they would load her up with milk of the poppy. Instead, they just kind of grab her and manhandle her, which is horrible. So they're exposing her belly. Obviously, no one thought to pour some alcohol on there, which is constantly in the show. But I guess they didn't know about sepsis. And now she figures out what's going on. Okay, so just to give some pause to this very momentous occasion, he's doing a vertical incision, which obviously we don't do. We all go horizontal. He's going up and down, um, probably because that's the only thing they knew how to do back then, but he's making an up and down cut on her skin, okay? And we always go low in the pelvis, and we always go side to side, less pain, less complications, better wound healing, way better for cosmetics. Okay, so he's performing the surgery here. They've got people reaching in, obviously no gloves. I mean, infection risk, wow, I don't even want to think about it. And as they're starting to pull the baby out, she's obviously writhing in agony. Realistically, by now she would have passed out. There's a whole lot of bleeding. That's probably pretty realistic, although there isn't that much bleeding in a cesarean section. Actually, till after the baby's out, usually. Yeah. So here she's kind of passing out, hopefully. And now you start seeing the blood. And they're still bringing the baby out. So you can see tons of blood pouring out of her. That's not realistic at all, guys. Like, there is not nearly that much bleeding at a C-section. Even with a giant up and down incision like that, you're still not gonna get that much bleeding unless you really make a cut in the wrong place and go over the placenta or something like that. Hopefully he didn't do that, obviously they wouldn't know, but this amount of blood is incredibly unrealistic. We don't see anything near that kind of blood loss normally. So here obviously there's, you know, some loss of color in her skin. She's not moving. She doesn't look to be breathing anymore she's probably succumbed to the blood loss. Um, and he's just holding her hand. Oh. And you can see there again, massive amount of blood loss. They've covered her up. They weren't able to close anything because you can see that there's like a cavity where her gown is actually sinking into the wound. Totally gross. Congratulations, Your Grace. So she's unfortunately expired now, and the hand of the king is notifying everybody so that they leave. And at the same time, the baby is okay, but then this critical moment makes this little gasp. And the Meister starts getting nervous. And for those of you that do watch the show, again, huge spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this part, um, unfortunately, the baby does not survive either. Why would the baby not survive? I mean, with that amount of blood loss, if some of that was maternal blood, it would have reduced the blood flow going to the baby. And also, if it was cutting into placenta, the baby itself would have been compromised. Not to mention, if they did give a ton of milk of the poppy, the baby could have had respiratory depression and it wouldn't survive from inability to get rid of the narcotics. And when it wanted to breathe, you wouldn't be able to make it breathe even if you were stimulating the baby. So this is the first delivery in House of the Dragon. Super cool show, um, wildly irresponsible medicine in that part. There's no way anybody bleeds that much. Um, they definitely should have anesthetized her somehow if they were gonna try that procedure. Um, breech babies don't get turned when the mom is in labor. So kind of unrealistic, but I thought this would be a cool thing to share with everybody and review and let you kind of see how TV shows don't always get it right. So I hope you enjoyed that. We're gonna review the next delivery or at least attempted delivery on another episode. So join us for 
the Fertility Factor Fiction House of the Dragon series. Have a great night, guys, and we will see you again soon.